punch and configure, boom. And now we've got it up and running. I finally received what is promised one of the best presence sensors out there, the Everything Presence One. As you know, Lewis from Everything Smart Home manufactured and designed this himself with his dad and his team. As a fellow content creator, I got no preferential treatment. I had to wait for this device as anyone else. So today's video, we're gonna be opening this device up. We're gonna look at how it works. We're gonna configure it in Home Assistant and you'll get my initial reactions. Fundamental difference between a motion sensor and a presence sensor is that normally you have this waving gesture to trigger a motion sensor. Motion sensors have got better, but if you're in a room that's stationary, perhaps a living room or a bedroom, and you then you suddenly find your lights turning off because motion has uh, apparently disappeared, then this is when one of these devices come in where you actually have presence. So presence actually, you don't have to move, but you have to be within the range of the sensor or in a room, for example, to be actually captured by this device. Okay, so let's open up the box. We've got a couple of things in here. I guess this is for the PIR. We have the main board. We've got the case, which can swivel like this, and it can also tilt, oh yeah, and it can detach, so you can like reattach it quite easily. MM Wave with headers. This is the Sen 0395. So let me tell you the cost of these items at the time of recording. You can purchase the case for around seven uh, British pounds. Then you can get the kit, either you can get a full kit, which you have all three of these for 60 British pounds, or you have the board only, which is this component for 30 pounds. So there's this QR code up on top here. So once you've scanned the QR code with your phone, you'll get the documentation here and it will tell you everything that you need to do. So as I have not read this before, I'm gonna actually go and take some time to read through this carefully, and then I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, so we've got the instructions up on the screen, and you can see we have our components here all ready to go. The instructions that we've got provided are mainly for the case at the beginning. So you can see that this has already been done in my example. So this is actually great. So if you haven't got this done, you should have this little circle. You push it through in the um, proper way. You should see the ball insert, obviously at the back, not in the front. So this should be exactly like this is. And then if you uh, keep scrolling down in the images, you can see that you can simply just take the base and just slot it in. It's quite intuitive. So. This part is set up so we can leave this alone. Obviously we have the front of the case which detaches quite simply um, from here. So you can just touch it and, and then detach it again. So now we need to pick up the EP1 board, the MM wave sensor and the PIR. So just to reference, we've got them all here. The first thing I'm going to pick up is the actual main board. Very cool also the logo of the Everything Presence One, Everything Smart technology. So a little bit of personality in this board, which I, I appreciate. So we've got this set up here. So I'm just gonna be, I'm always very careful trying to actually put this up while I'm filming. So this is the correct orientation. We need to get this in place. And then I'm just gonna gently try to slot this in. You should notice that you have the USB-C port coming at the bottom. So you are, you should be double sure that we've got it the right way around. So very gently when you've got these electronics, we should gently push in each one of these corners and you hear a little bit of a click sound. Cool, so if we look at it from this side, you can see that this hasn't been pushed in, this part has. To spin on the other side, we can see that this has been perfectly pushed in on this end. Cool, so now it's snapped. I had to apply a little bit more force on the la uh, last corner, but you can see it's all neatly aligned. We've got the USB-C over here. We've got these vents, so we're all good. So let's scroll down, take the MM wave sensor and insert it in one of the two holes. Here is the sensor. So I'm just gonna open it. Conveniently, we've got this little thing that we can pull. So there's this little component over here. Don't lose it when you're pulling it out. I'm just going to drop it here. So you can see we've got all of the little pins. We can put this aside. I'm not too sure where this little piece actually goes. So we'll find out. 
So we should use slot one, which is recommended for most people. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says slot two. So this is slot two. So I'm assuming that this would be slot one and it actually says MM wave. So you can see we have the image here where it's put on slot two and the first image where it's slotted as part of slot one. So are we gonna go with slot one? We just follow the instructions really. So you can see these little pins aligning. So again, very gently push them in and you should see them really going in all the way. So now this has been a set up. Okay, so the next step, we go to get the PIR sensor. So you can see this has uh, three pins. So let's follow the correct alignment. This is where the sensor goes and it can only fit one way. So if you feel that you're trying to push it and it doesn't fit, then don't force it too much. These pins are delicate and they can actually cool. So I'm quite happy with how these are aligned. So I'm gonna apply a gentle force. You can see very gentle until the pins are fully inserted. Now I can't quite seem to push it more than this. I'm not sure if this is perfectly aligned or if we need to go a little bit more in front, but while I'm, I don't wanna break it. So for now I'm gonna keep it here. I think it's, it's stable enough so it's not gonna come off. It feels pushed down enough. So we're gonna keep it as it is. So we're comparing the final results of the board, how it looks like. It looks pretty much similar to the standard design unless you've tried to use this slot number two. And now we can clip the case back on and this is the wrong way around so it goes obviously this way so that's secure on this side and now it's secure on the other side let me check as it pulled off all set up nice and sturdy so we're going to switch cameras and i'm going to show you how we can power up this device and we're going to test it up and see if it works with the power of home assistant and these new sensors coming to market the possibilities are becoming limitless to help you with your logic and your thinking and improving your automations, then I'd recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. One of the courses that I'm doing is practice with logic. You can see over here, I'm moving some of these robots around. It's a very fun and interactive way of learning, quite different from just consuming videos. It encourages you to keep on going in your learning experience when you actually crack one of the problems and you actually solve them and get the right answer, you get some satisfying feeling that you've accomplished something. I do encourage you to use brilliant.org during your week. It's a great break from your tasks and it just keeps your brain practicing math, logic, algorithms or any type of content that you actually like from the platform. There are quite a broad range of courses available. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash smart home makers. The first 200 of you will get 20% off your Brilliant annual subscription. Okay, so I got a USB-C cable and I plugged it just behind my iMac over here. So it's blinking, I don't know if you can actually see this. So we're gonna keep following the instructions until we get this set up in a home assistant. So the step, next step is to update the product and to connect it to Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna click on this. So it says, make sure that the EP1 is connected to USB port on your computer, done. Set the platform you would like to install below, hit the connect button. Okay, so let's pick, okay, so we can pick here between Home Assistant and SmartThings. So we've got Home Assistant here. So Home Assistant, install the correct software on your Everything Smart Home for Home Assistant. Once installed and connect to Wi-Fi, follow the Home Assistant section, section to connect to EP1 to your Home Assistant server. Fantastic. With the EP1, okay, so we need to click on this. If you don't see a connect button below, use a supported browser like Google Chrome. Okay, so I can't see a connected button, so I will uh, move this to Chrome. Okay, so I can see this button connect, so I'm gonna click connect. GitHub.io, so this is basically everything smart home.github.io wants to connect to a serial port, so that's fine. I'm not sure which one should we pick. I'm just gonna go with the USB serial port and see if that works. So install everything Presence one, yeah, we're gonna click. Do you want to install everything presence one? All the data on the device will be erased. That sounds good, so click install. So erasing, so far so good. Obviously, don't unplug your device while you're doing this. Okay, so now it says it's gonna be taking at least two minutes. Okay, installation complete. So I'm gonna click next. And now we can uh, punch in our Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm just gonna do this 
off camera. Okay, so the device has been connected to the network. I can click add to home assistant. So you can see we've got this redirect. Now because home assistant is not saved on my Google Chrome browser, I just go switch back to Safari and we're gonna paste it here, save. All good, so we're gonna open the link in Home Assistant. Do you wanna set up ESP Home? I'm gonna click OK. Please enter the configuration settings of your ESP Home node. Huh, I don't, huh, I don't know, I don't have one. Host, I'm a bit stuck here now, so maybe I need to install ESP Home before, because I've seen it discovered over here, everything present sensor, ESP Home, so you can click Configure. Do you wanna add ESP Home node to Home Assistant? Yes, let's see if this works without me Ping an IP address in. Please enter connection details of your ESP Home node. Okay, so it's asking me again about this ESP Home node. Can't connect to ESP. Please make sure your YAML files contain an API line. So let me perhaps read the documentation. So we've got the next page, which is connected to Home Assistant. So for most people, Home Assistant will automatically discover and add the EP1 immediately thanks to the EP ESP Home's um, DNS discovery which that actually happened to me. To add it to Home Assistant, simply head to settings and device services and you should see the presence. Yeah, that's fine. So I do click configure. So you say, yeah, so I click submit. So if some reason the everything smart on presence is not automatically discovered, then you can actually add it in manually. You'll need to first figure out the IP address. Okay, fair enough. And then you once you have the IP address, you can go to ESP Home and then punch in the host and the port. And then we get the success but I am not getting this success yet. Let's see what we need to do to get this configured. Okay, so by digging into this forum post, seems like I need the add-on from the ESP Home official add-on. That's what we're going to do. So we're gonna to go to the add-on store. So I'm clicking settings and add-ons, add-on store. We look for ESP Home, got it here. So I'm gonna click ESP Home, I click install. We've got start on boot, that sounds good. Showing the sidebar, we can have it here. So we, we've started the service, it seems to be up and running now. Um, I can go to the log and I don't see any red text and I can see successfully send discovery information to Home Assistant. So I think that this part of the configuration is done. So I'm gonna try again to add that sensor back to the devices and services, back here to the configure, keep this IP address setting, punch in configure, boom. And now we've got it up and running. So we have the everything present sensor. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in the kitchen eventually. And I'm gonna click finish. Let's go and have a look at it in more detail. So we have one device. You see the hardware version 1.1.3. The firmware um, is updated basically, ah, that's quite interesting. So it's 27th of March, 2023, so quite recently. And we have various sensors. We have a humidity sensor. We have a light sensor, we have a um, detected MMM wave detected sensor, we have an occupancy one, PAR temperature sensor, really cool. So we have the LED light and I can see the LED light here. And then if I turn it off, does that turn it off? Yeah, status LED light has gone off. So we've got the distance configuration, we've got an MMM wave LED. So if I turn that on, you can see it here. So you see how responsive this is, takes it off. It takes a while, I think it's gone. So back to the documentation, I like that sort of the entities are explained. So after adding the EP1, you might wonder which sensors you can use and what they do. So you can see one device and 16 entities. And this is exactly what I can see also from the real screen. So we can see we've got a temperature, humidity, and uh, illuminance in Lux, which is great. So the MM wave and PI occupancy. So you can find a sensor called MM wave, indicates if movement is detected. So we can have a configurable offset blind time, which we'll, we'll cover. The default is 12.5 seconds, which is basically how long the sensor takes to go from off or clear state after the motion has stopped being detected. So this is the sensor over here. The PIR sensor indicates if motion was detected or not. It is also a user configurable timeout period, which is default by 10 seconds. It means that it'll take 10 seconds for the last motion for the PIR sensor to go from off to clear. And then the occupancy sensor is a combination of the MM wave sensor and the PII sensor. So if either one of the two, the text motion occupancy will be on or detected. So both MM wave and PIR sensor need to be clear before the occupancy will be uh, determined as off. So the detail 
uh, and the level of explanation behind this documentation is really great because you can really understand how this has been set up. Not only that, it feels to me you have also an immense amount of configuration that you can actually set up yourself. So you can set up the controls in terms of the milliseconds and the distance in which this respond. So this gives you a huge amount of power back to the user to set up. Next week, I'm going to be changing some of my Node-RED automations to start getting use of this sensor. And we're going to see how that actually changes and how that impact my smart home from using a standard motion sensor from Akara and then moving to this new powerful presence sensor. If you want to see that video, subscribe to the channel and I will drop it as soon as I can. I'm trying to push as many videos as I can for you guys to get more content. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it. If I did any mistake or got anything wrong, feel free to comment in the section down below. Great work, Lewis. I really appreciate this device. When that video drops, you'll see it over here and I'll see you in that video. Ciao.